All right, this is the Jimmy Cabs 5150 interview series and Bulldozer Magazine. I have Oscar Garcia of Nazi on the phone. What's going on, Oscar? I'm doing all right, man. And yourself? Hey, pretty good, man. You know what? A lot's been going on after your 2014th release of Condemned to the System, Nausea, on Willow Tip Records. So why don't we talk about uh, what, you've been, what you've been doing. You've been pretty busy, man. you got the Terrorizer LA Project, and you also have Nausea, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Man. i got both done. Yep. Now, what was, what was interesting was, uh, earlier in 2014, you debuted Terrorizer LA at the Grand Corps show. That was the first performance ever, correct? Yeah, been way back in the day. Huh? Yeah, how, how did you feel about finally getting up on stage and and uh, performing now under Terrorizer LA? Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I felt it. It felt a little strange at first, you know, because the thing is, I didn't really want to do it again. But you know, everybody wants to see it, and you know how Pete's doing his Terrorizer, but. Uh, you know, that's only the drums, man, but everybody wants to hear, I guess, you know, uh, people are just wondering how the heck was I going to sound or whatever and all this crap, man. But, uh, no, I guess it felt good after the first couple of songs, man. Yeah, did you feel good about going up on stage and performing those classic songs that you wrote? Uh, yeah, 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 like, uh, just, uh, just nervous at first, <laughs> What What was it that made you nervous about it or made you have some sort of, uh, hesitation? Well, I think it's so then it's like when Jesse tried to come back with Terrorizer and, you know, Pete's trying to make him come back and I've heard so much shit that these guys try to make it come back and and it didn't live up to everybody's expectations. Right. And I remember when Jesse, before he passed away, we were talking about that and, and I was just telling him, uh, just why don't you just leave the name alone in the band? But, you know, that's all he had. And... You know, so then who am I to tell him, you know, he was going to do what he was going to do. You know, I had nausea already going, so, you know, he trying to the name. Do you feel that so by you... The name, huh? do, is that what you felt? You felt he tarnished the name and the legacy? I think he should have just left it as it was, man, with the world downfall, man. I mean, he tried to do it with that Dark Days Ahead. Which right. Which terrorizer songs, but there were nothing... Nothing like the world downfall, man. I well, I know I helped him write some little songs, which he still used in the dark days ahead, but they were more death metal songs. Right. Like Benediction and Mayhem and all that. That's like death metal. That was our death metal time until we started switching over to the grind, hardcore, mm-hmm. you know, expectation to the music, and that's where the, the world downfall came out of. And uh, the way that I saw it, man, I go, well, he didn't keep it under that way. He tried. I guess he tried with songs like Fall. He even Fall Out, I wrote some of that. He motored and moved it around, but I don't know what the hell they were trying to do with that piano thing, too, or whatever. I don't know which album had like a piano intro and some bullshit, and they tried to do a Death Shall Rise 2 point, whatever. And I don't know. I don't know what the hell they were trying to do, man. <laughs> Honestly, man, I don't know. So, I don't know. I don't care. So. Be, yeah, yeah. You know, because, uh, this is this is always an interesting. Is this is always a very interesting subject when I discuss with you with this. That that era, obviously, was very difficult for you, especially especially when uh, a lot of that legacy you had you, you had been involved in in the earlier stages, and then to see it resurrected and, and obviously stray from creatively what, what you would have wanted when you decided to. Bring back Terrorizer L.A. This is after the fact of Pete doing his version of Terrorizer. Wow. Did you have a concept of how you wanted to portray this new project, but yet keep the legacy untarnished, as you would say? The whole, you know, the whole thing just comes down to it. Like I said before, man, uh, when I kept on pushing for it was my wife. I did it mostly for her, man, just because she wanted to see it. She kept bugging me for years and years and years and years. I get to there, I go, I don't, I want to do it, man. I don't need to do it, man. I go, I have my back. And, uh, her too was telling me, go, well, people want to see this and all that. I go, well, fuck, man. I go, they could see with Pete. He goes, yeah, but it's not, it's not, because they want to hear you play. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I told her, I go, well, I don't want to just make it come out and say that we're terrorizing, which, you know, uh, 
to them. There will never be another terrorizer. And, uh, you know, that, you know, so, you know, people hit me up now, too, and they tell me, I go, no, this is, you know, about terrorizers. I was on, you know, some people wrote to me saying that I'm glad the real terrorizers back. I go, no, 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 no. We're not the real terrorizers. This is our version of terrorizers. Right. I know, because it's all completely different guys, except for me just doing the scene. But, you know, this is just our version. Like you say, it's how they, more or less, you got, you know, guys from other bands that are, you know, they got the established bands too. It's pretty much like an all star thing. I know my buddy on Cos playing bass. You know, how we got rid of sadistic, and of course, you know, Leon, the kid in, plays in Nazia, plus he got some murder concert, and of course, Mike. And Mike got his bands and everything. So it's pretty much more like, you know, our version of terrorism. So that's why when we go play the whole thing, you know, I always, well, we only play one show, but I know we got a few shows not coming up. I'm just going to say, you know, we're not the real terrorizers. I'll never be another terrorizer, but this is our version of it. Hopefully everybody likes it. Well, it's, what's interesting is, is not only does everybody like it, from the young generation to my generation, the older generation, uh, there, there's a big excitement over it because... I mean, it, it's not just my opinion. This is the closest to what Terrorizer will be ever seen now in 2014 going into 15. Uh, let's talk about the FOAD releases. What's going on with that? Is that going to be new Terrorizer LA material or is that classic material? It's, uh, it's, it's classic stuff. It's all pretty much all our... Uh, the last night, man, the Hoover, the Hoover Park live shows uh, on there. Oh, I'm Jesus, there. are you serious? Yes, I'm serious, man. It's on there, man. The whole show's on there. It, that's why it's uh, two disc and two LP. It, um, it's like both formats. Vinyl, it's two vinyls. And the uh, other one, it's a uh, two CD. Uh -huh. and eight gate full, whatever. It's like the whole, it's the whole complete, pretty much like 64, I mean, 40, 46 tracks, I think. 46 tracks. Wow. And uh, one of them is the whole part show, man. Now is that the is that the is that the Hoover? I'm sorry. Is that the Hoover Park show? Is that the Hoover Park show where the harpies uh, uh, crashed in and caused all kinds of bedlam? I think so. I think so, man. I think you were there. You're saying too. Yeah, yeah. I I, I barely survived that show. Yeah, but it's that one. That show. I, I believe it's that show. Plus, it's one song that we didn't release on the World Downfall. Right. Which uh, it was called Collapse, and we never really finished it. Uh, but I had a good recording of it, and uh, and I don't know, man, I don't know, just put a, a bass on there because we didn't have bass, and I think he built a, one more guitar on it. But it had vocals, Jesse playing guitar, and I had Pete playing it. And it was like a real rough mix, but a good one. Yeah. And, you know, Alejandro just touched it up a little bit. And it's the first time ever being released. I gave, uh, you know, Buck Off and Die Records uh, permission to go ahead and do it, man. So this is probably the first and only to, you know, before the world downfall, you know, release, you know, all, all our demos, you know, so actual official release. Wow. You know, there have been a lot of bootlegs, a lot of all this, that now, but this is the uh, first time ever I myself gave, you know, some permission to those guys to release it. Wow, this is really the archive <laughs> stuff, huh? This is, this is the good shit right here that you've had away, you've had stashed away for a while. But it's like old demos, some of them, so then I didn't even have, and uh, for the goodness of some people, man, they, uh, like the Hoover Port, uh, Port Show, man, so then they, uh, some guy had it, man, and uh, he actually contacted those guys from uh, Buck Off and Die Records, and they told me about it, and they said it sounds real good, and go ahead, man. Wow. And yeah, it was it, man, and uh, it was a price, man, it's 46 tracks, man. Right on, and when will this be out? <laughs> it's out already. <laughs> Oh, okay. Already, it just barely came out, and uh, I'm supposed to be getting my copies soon. They've already mailed them out this week, but you know how it takes from Italy to over here, man. So I'm getting both versions. Um, myself, I'm selling them through the Facebook thing, so if people want to buy them, they just contact me on the Facebook. Okay, and, and that's on um, That's on Fuck so, Off and Die Records, right? Yeah. Either hey. they could contact them, or they could contact me and myself. Because I have a few copies to sell too, but uh, right now they're on the way over here. It takes about at least two, two and a half weeks before they actually get over there. So, um, you know, there's a tell the truth, and I'm eager to see it because I've only seen.
stuff over the internet from it from the guys that sent me. Mm -hmm. But I want to see it in my hand, which they told me that it came out real nice. But. Yeah, I could imagine. How do you feel about releasing terrorizer material, even though it's it's you know old material? How do you feel about releasing it now to this whole new generation? Well, because they still want it. I just trip out. People still want this stuff, man. Mm -hmm. They just tripped out. They saying that we're one of the first ones that uh, you know to come up with this stuff, which is very kind words from everybody, that, and including yourself. But you know, so then. You know, we all know Napalm and all that were the first ones who come up with the style and we just might not be like them, but to just be in the same category with them, wow, it's like, you know, it's an honor for us, man. Wow. You know, that, that, you know, people, you know, tell me this and that. I'm like, you know, I'll just trip you out. <laughs> it's just still a big trip, man. The whole thing, man. But, uh, you know, so we're very, well, I'm very honored on that. And all that because I, I honestly thought that we were, we we're just a bunch of kids that want to record a record and, you know, fuck it, if it did well, great, if it didn't, not well, but as long as we record a record, man, but we didn't know it was going to impact until now, what, 20, what, 25 years later? Yeah, yeah, around the world? Well, uh, we were thinking that, you know, just record it and that's it and people will forget about it, but not still still buying it, man. No, nah, man, around the world multiple times. For everybody, you know, for everybody, this will be like a treat, like, you know, our demos, the live show, just the artwork, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of artwork that we had from back then, it's all in there, man. Wow. The whole thing and uh, a little brief history on, on the band and how we started out and all this now let me ask you this now now that you're comp you're playing with a bunch of people that you're comfortable with you're going to be playing some more shows under terrorize rally correct yeah yeah we're doing the obscene extreme next year <coughs> and then we're doing a couple of festivals we're doing, we're doing one in portland january then february doing that uh yeah i think it's february it's that badass festival three mm -hmm. that one's with napalm and uh Voivod. And we're supposed to be doing another festival in Mexico and Cancun in June. And we come back and then we take off to Europe. And that's both bands. Now the answer is we'll be going to Europe doing the obscene extreme. Wow. So you're going to be doing double duty? <coughs> yeah, for that festival. Now, do you anticipate playing any more shows in the United States or, you know, outside the United States under Terrorizer LA? Are you open to that? Are you comfortable with that? I mean, the thing is, uh, I mean, if the other guys are willing to, so then yeah, everybody gives a thumbs up, you know, because everybody else has their own band, you know, how they, you know, the old, all the ones working with, you know, his band, my band, the whole thing. And, uh, you know, you got Rick, and then you got Mike, he has his band. Uh, if everybody has the time and and you know everything's right with the festivals and yeah we give a thumbs up okay I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we will but it'll be just but it'll be just be just only the of course like the world downfall album that's it nothing new right right now have you has it entered your mind about trying maybe to write new material under Terrorizer LA no is that something that you're adamantly against no no I'm gonna not even try let me ask you this, why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of people are saying that the uh, conventional system, the nausea, is a new terrorizer. So it's going to be more or less... <laughs> it's, uh... Nah, I'm not going to follow you, man. I go, you know, we're just happy to play it. Um, I know Leon. Leon. Um, he was a fan of terrorizer back then. I was expecting when I didn't really know Leon that much and I heard past interviews. And I mentioned terrorizer and terrorizer and he's actually now playing it. With me doing the vocals, uh, I mean that's good enough, man. That's what people want to hear. Yeah. I mean, but as for um, coming out with a new album and all that, I know we got a couple of offers, but nah. Would it be would it be that all these decades you've been not only spearheaded and determined to keep nausea alive through all the lineup changes and and everything, but that is the main band and you don't want it to you don't want the terrorizer to overshadow that correct uh, exactly i don't man, because i just put too much time yeah my heart just too much into the nausea thing and especially with eric you know my drummer um and all the bullshit me and him spawn through for years and years and years and to finally get 
looking them to assist them out and and it was a hit and we're like tripping out and how everybody accepted it we're like wow yeah and you know we didn't change anything the only thing we change is proper and bass player and that's what made the big change for us now I guess we can bring their sound and all that to our music and we just needed that boost because uh, past members they didn't, they didn't I guess they didn't really cut it for us man but these guys do yeah, well, they're professional, man. Yeah, there they are, man. They know what they're doing. That's the best thing about it. Now, this is another question. I don't have to babysit, man. Yeah, babysitting, exactly. I don't have to babysit at all. Me and Eric are just, especially now, man, we're too old for this bullshit of babysitting members or whatever. Nah. Yeah, do do. Everybody comes in, does what they have to do, and we're out, man. Yeah, so, do what you got to do, but once you got to once you gotta come through and hit a home run, just come hit the home run. Yeah. Actually, so I'm just, I'm just being gay. I'm, you know, I'm just more excited. Hopefully, that we do the next one, man. Next album, man. The next Nazi album. That's the one I'm really getting excited for. Are you writing for yeah. that now? Yeah. Uh, we got some stuff. We're very in the very early stages, man. But the title, we got the title already. It's uh, uh, Exile to Confinement. That's going to be the next one. Wow. <laughs> Exile to Confinement. So that's the next Nazi album, man. We hope to have it recorded. Hopefully by the middle of next year. I mean, right now, me and Eric have been uh, writing some stuff. Well, I'm writing there, and he's doing his part, and, uh, you know, we're waiting for Alejandro to get back because he's on tour right now doing sound for uh, Exuma Carcass. Mm -hmm. So he'll be back soon. And then Leon, you know, for Leon's here, but uh, we got like maybe about maybe four new songs. And uh, I'm pretty sure we might bring back a couple of the songs that we didn't weren't able to put in the condemn because of the time wise um there'll be like songs on the demos that we had that sounded real good but now try to record real good and probably a few surprises from the you know, we record some of the songs that we had on uh, the crimes against humanity because we know that the crimes, uh, crimes against humanity they had some pretty good songs but just the production was soft man mm -hmm. I mean, back then we didn't have the money to i mean produce the album right man i mean the songs are good but if we had a better guitar sound, better drum sound, better whole thing, who knows? And uh, we're looking into that, man. Maybe uh, we're recording and bringing back a couple of those songs from there. Wow, wow. Now, and just, uh, yeah, just this, this, the writing of the new Nausea, does this also, are there contributions from the other members as well? They will, they will. Because the way that I write, man, I write probably the uh, most, well, uh, the way that uh, we make up songs, me and Eric make up like main, the main stairs of songs, like the main whole thing. And then, you know, I just, when time comes and they'll hear them, I'll tell them, this is the way the song goes, go ahead now, you put your topping on it. And he comes in and brings in whatever he's going to put in. Oh, okay, that's and interesting. Then, uh, and the same thing with uh, Alejandro. Uh, and then he might have a couple of ideas, riffs here and there. Um, they'll probably say, oh, better get it, we move this riff and put this one in. Okay, I will try it out and see how it But pretty much I'll come in with the structure of it. Eric will, Eric will work his stuff on it, and then maybe I will pile his stuff on it, which is, sounds great, like what he did for uh, the Condemn album. And the same thing with uh, Alondo. I'm just piecing them together, and man, the songs are done. Let, let, me, let me ask you something that has been floating around the internet. Uh, and and knowing that I have a, a a personal real friendship with you, uh, I know what the answer is. But I want to make sure that the listeners understand. There's rumors that there's possibly going to be a terrorizer reunion reunion with Pete. Can you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no, no, man. Have you have you been approached to that? No. Okay. I has mean, there's a, I mean, there's a couple of guys who. Uh... Uh, I'm not, I don't want to say who it is, but some people have already like, wrote to me privately on Facebook and saying that I should, you know, buy guns should be guy at buy guns or stuff like that, or it would be great if I did with Peach Terrorizer, and I'm not saying no, man. I don't want to be an asshole or whatever, man, but it's just like they weren't there to see what happened or whatever, man. Yeah. I was just kind of bullshit, man. Like, you know, what these people say, that buy guns, buy guns, buy guns, buy guns, but, but it's kind of hard, man. I go, because it's. You know, when, but man, you're trying and trying, and then there's guys out here talking their crap, and 
you don't even know about it and somebody else tells you, hey, this fool's saying this shit for the longest time and what? Like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude, man? Saying that, you know, supposedly that got, you know, which I did get married, but became Christian and a family man. So what? I go, that's my fucking business, man. It's not their business. Yeah. And, you know, saying that I abandoned music, which was bullshit, man, because the people who were around, you know, I had nausea from the beginning, kept on. I go, yes, we stopped here and there, but come back and, you know, here and there, but, you know, uh, you know, these people start saying that, I should forget what this, ah, man, man, it's kind of hard, man. It's kind of hard not to, uh, I mean, to do that, man. Does it also add salt to the wounds that he has his own version of Terrorizer, even though he never wrote any of the songs? Yeah, that's the thing that laughed, man, because he was only, he, so then, he wasn't even the original drummer, man. It was some guy named Fish. Mm-hmm. Um, Fish, uh, I think his name was Juan, Juan Perez, but he wasn't the Fish. And uh, he was the original Terrorizer drummer. But, uh, you know, he was just a little bit. You know, PK managed on the band, but the songs were already written, man. So, so it's so, it's somewhat. Would it would it be safe to say that it's somewhat of a farce the way he's portraying himself with this new project? That's his business, man. I don't really care what he does, man. I go, you know, he just. Uh, I know he has to make a living. I know the band, the name was there, and it's like again, man. When, I, when we came back to our me and Jesse. We're speaking before uh, before he passed away, before he recorded the Dark Days Ahead, man. Uh, I remember he came back, he wanted to bring him back, but I already had nausea going, and, you know, he wanted to bring him back, and I told him why. I go, you should just leave it as it is. That's when the world downfall was already getting at, you know, its peak and the whole thing, and, and I told him, I go, you should just leave it alone, man. I go, nah, we should bring it back. I go, just leave it alone and just, you know, just don't fuck up the name. But, turn off, you know, he did what he wanted to do. And I read some reviews and a lot of people saying that, you know, how, you know, the two failed attempts to come back to, you know, go up against a world downfall didn't match up to it, man. Yeah. And I'm going to have a wide enough, you know, wild, wide mess with it, man. Yeah, I yeah, no, no, I hear you. You know that we did with the, well, you know, with the brand new Nazi album with the Condemn, man, when people are saying that this was supposed to be the second one. Well, you know, I tell people a damn, the whole thing, but there's no way that we were trying to, com- you know, compete against the world downfall. But, you know, a lot of people saying that this is a lot of similarities in the writing, the whole thing, as well. Everybody knows now. Yeah, you know, there you go. There it is, man, because I know when Jesse tried to do it, I'm not saying he can't write, but just his style was different than my style. My style just started changing, you know, and I'd be more hardcore, more, um, you know, punk influence, hardcore influence, a little bit of metal, the whole thing, but, you know, that's just my style, so. Well, it's already been established now, man, who who is the real terrorizer and, and who is the mastermind behind it all. Hey, let's talk well, about... I don't want to take the whole credit, you know. It's Jesse he helped out, too, but, you know. You know, God rest his soul, but... Uh, I'm just glad that everybody knows now. Yeah, yeah. Does that make you feel good, and, and does it relieve a lot of pressure and a lot of past pain? We leave a lot of pressure in the past pain and all that. Mm-hmm. It was when, when, uh, we, when uh, we released a Condemned album and people dug it. That was it, man. Yeah. That was it, man. When people took it in because I know when we recorded it and, you know, we're going to... I'm telling you, man, a lot of labels didn't want us, man. And Little Tip was probably like one of the last uh, labels that took us, man. And they gambled on us too, man. Because I know we shopped that shit around to relapse this, that, and there was no takers, and sure enough, man, to uh, Leon, you know, you know somebody there, um, they took a chance on us, man, it was, it was all right, fuck it, I take a chance on them, and uh, damn, what happened? Yeah, look at it now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, man, then Deep Six, too. Well, the, sec- know, well, the second... Uh, sold out. The first pressing, they're on the second pressing already. I don't know if they're almost done with the second one. Wow. But, um, yeah, man, that, that took a lot of pressure and relief off, man, because, uh, I know, 
and I'm coming to the day that it was with East Man, I was like, really, well, I don't mean that, but like, yeah, people are gonna like it, people gonna shit on us, people gonna say, ah, these motherfuckers are too old, they don't got it no more. You know, trying to compete with the, with the young bands, the youngsters, the whole thing, we're like, fuck. But, uh, shit, man, basically all the reviews that we got, man, they were great, man. <laughs> Just unbelievable, man. We're like, wow. And, oh, well, you know, we're good for that. That's that's what took off a lot of pressure and everything. Yeah, well, you proved yourself, man. Yeah. Let's After, talk. What, 23 years? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh. 23 years, man. After 23 <laughs> years, I know a lot of people tell you, okay, talking to me, saying, so what took you there so long? <laughs> oh, man, just so much bullshit, man. Like, personal and band shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I'm not going to mention whatever, but it's like personal problems that each one of us has. I'm not saying it is that band problems, too. That's just like shit that happened in life, man. Just life shit happened. Wow. Well, you know what, man? You uh, you definitely persevered, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the the new release coming out. Will that also be on Willow Tip? I hope so, man. I know so that right now, uh, Alex, uh, I don't know, basically, he wants to go for a bigger label, but, uh, you know, the way that I think of it is, you know, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Yeah. Like, well, I'm happy I'm happy with your tip. If they want to carry the next one, man, I'm, I'm cool with that, man. Right on. I'm cool with that, man, but uh, I know he wants to shop around for a bigger label, but uh, I know we've had a little disagreement here and there about that, man, because I told him, I go, man, I go, they, I go, they did us good. The whole thing, man, I go, oh, man, I go, just keep down the label, man. I go, like I said, if it, if it ain't broke, why fix it, man? And, uh, same thing with Deep Six, man. They came through, Bob, and the whole thing, and, uh, I'm happy with both labels, man. All right, man. Let's let's talk about December sixth. You're going to be playing a fundraiser for Lovey Castillo, which is a little girl uh, that is fighting cancer. Okay. This is a uh, uh, this is really a, a good cause. This show is going. All the proceeds will be going to Lovey Castillo, correct? Right. All the money from the door will go to her. Everything. Right now, how do you feel about playing this, and what made you want to play this? Honestly, so as a matter of fact, I was saying, remember you were gonna do it at first, remember? Remember, but I don't know what happened, and then I think Jerry, Jerry from Larry Sinez came in, and he thought it was a good idea. And actually, it was Jerry and then my wife Kathleen. They were talking about it on Facebook, and I remember she was saying, "And Jerry could Jerry could get a place to do this." And, you know, I said, well, before, you know, you start saying yes or whatever, man, I go, just let me first, you know, talk to the guys and the whole thing first. Right. And, you know, if I get the okay from everybody, because, you know, we're not getting paid or anything, so. You know, but everybody said it was cool um, to do it. The only one that wasn't, the only one that wasn't sure, I think, was, uh, it was uh, Alex Hernando. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he's working, so he's, you know, he's a man. Well, as a matter of fact, he's in Europe right now, so we had, well, I had to ask my uh, buddy Cos to play bass, the guy who plays in the Terrorist early. Mm -hmm. So he came in and filled in, so, I mean, about doing his face, great, man. It's a good I mean, cause, man. It, man. I mean, you know, it's for a good cause, man. It's for that little girl, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, it's just to, uh, you know, hope, you know, hopefully, you know, make a happier Christmas. Yeah, right on, man. Because I know how a dad and uh, going through this, and you know, I can't, I can't imagine. Huh? I can't, man. I just can't imagine how you know how her dad's uh, thinking. I mean, he's a strong guy, the whole thing, man. Because I got two, you know, two kids myself, man. But to go through something like this, man. Huh? Yeah. Um, well, this is going on December 6th, and this is at Cafe Nella here in Los Angeles. Nausea, Bloody Phoenix, and who are the other bands? Uh, so does Desire. That's a friend of mine, Victor Ivan, and uh, Dead Issue, I believe. Okay. Yeah. And all the proceeds all the proceeds from the door will be going to Lebby Castillo, who's a little girl fighting cancer. Yep, yep. yep. All right, Oscar all Garcia, yep. I'm going to always... Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you, man. I wish you much luck and uh, on both projects, Nausea and Terrorizer LA. And as you mentioned, 
You're going to be playing a couple of dates with Terrorizer. What what are those dates again? Terrorizer LA, I should say. Uh, I know Portland in January. We're doing some festival in Portland. That's the end of January. I don't, I don't know the dates for sure. Hey, the dates I don't know, but I know the months. I know January. It'll be important. That's towards the end. Then February, that one's going to be like towards the end too. But that one's going to be the it is a badass festival three. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, was uh, actually with Napalm Man. Boy, wow, it's a three day, fe- two or three day festival in Dallas, Texas. And then we take Cancun. I think June twentieth. That one's for sure. Wow. That one, June twentieth in Cancun. That's a festival there. I think a one day festival and. I Yeah. Sounds and like I know I know we got a couple shows here and there. I think supposedly one in May here in Los Angeles, Terrorize LA, but uh the details ain't they're very sketchy right now, man. I know I was talking to this one promoter. Wanted to uh, do a do a show here in I think in May. So it's uh the end of May. No no, beginning of May. I think May fifth or sixth or something like that, but uh I'm still waiting for the reply, man. She was trying to deal we don't do here, so. And let's not forget. Bye. Let's not forget. Terrorizer LA. You're gonna be. Re- you released uh, a very good record on FOAD Records, which is the really brutal. <laughs> fuck, talk about old school. The old school Terrorizer yeah. demos yeah. and the Hoover Park Show. Forty six songs, man. Plus one song is uh, off the World Downfall album that wasn't that that didn't make the cut, but finally on finally released for everybody here. Wow, right on, man. Uh, I need myself. I need to get my hands on that. uh, Yep, and uh, it's a double CD and a double vinyl. So, a bunch of artwork and interviews and pictures and all this crap, man. Cool. Good stuff from the old old school, man. Oscar Garcia, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. It's always a pleasure, man. Hey, man, no problem, Jimmy. Anytime, man. Cheers.